Isolation. Isolation is defined as separation from others. Separation of people with infectious disease or susceptible to acquire disease from others. Isolation technique is a practice that designed to prevent the transmission of communicable diseases. Types of isolation. Historically, two primary types of isolation systems were used in healthcare. One, category of specific isolation. Two, disease specific isolation. Currently, these isolation classifications are mostly replaced by standard precaution and transmission based precaution. One, category specific isolation. Specific categories of isolation, for example, respiratory, contact, enteric, strict, or wound, are identified using color coded cards. This form of isolation is based on the client's diagnosis. The cards are posted outside the client's room and state that visitors must check with nurses before entering. 2. Disease specific isolation. Disease specific isolation uses a single all purpose sign. The nurse selects the items on the card that are appropriate for the specific disease that is causing isolation. Preparing for isolation. The purpose for isolation is to prevent spread of microorganisms and to control infectious diseases. Equipment required for this procedure. Specific equipment depends on isolation precaution system used. 1. Soap and running water. 2. Isolation cart containing masks, gowns, gloves, plastic bags, isolation tape. 3. Linen hamper and trash can, when needed. 4. Paper towel. 5. Door card indicating precautions. Procedure. 1. Check orders for isolation. 2. Obtain isolation cart from central supply, if needed. 3. Check that all necessary equipment to carry out the isolation order is available. 4. Place isolation card on the client's door. 5. Ensure that linen hamper and trash cans are available, if needed. 6. Explain purpose of isolation to client and family. 7. Instruct family in procedures required. 8. Wash hands with antimicrobial soap before and after entering isolation room. Types of antimicrobial soap or agent depend on infectious agent and client condition. Donning and removing isolation attire. Equipment needed. A gown and clean gloves. Procedure for putting on or donning attire. 1. Wash and dry hands. 2. Take gown from isolation cart or cupboard. Put on a new gown each time you enter an isolation room. 3. Hold gown so that opening is in back when you are wearing the gown. 4. Put gown on by placing one arm at a time through sleeves, put gown up and over your shoulder. 5. Wrap gown around your back, tying strings at your neck. 6. Wrap gown around your waist, making sure your back is completely covered. Tie string around your waist. 7. Dunai shield and mask, if indicated. Mask is required if there is a risk of splashing fluids. 8. Don clean gloves and pull gloves over gown wristlets. Removing attire. 1. Unite gown waist strings. 2. Remove gloves and dispose of them in garbage bag. 3. Next, untie neck strings bringing them around your shoulders so that gown is partially off your shoulders. 4. Using your dominant hand and grasping clean part of wristlet, put sleeve wristlet over your non-dominant hand. Use your non-dominant hand to up-pull sleeve wristlet over your dominant hand. 5. 
grasp outside of gown through sleeves at shoulders. Pull gown down over your arms. 6. Hold both gown shoulders in one hand. Carefully draw your other hand out of gown, turning arm of gown inside out. Repeat this procedure with your other arm. 7. Hold gown away from your body. Fold gown up inside out. 8. Discard gown in appropriate place 9. Remove eye shield and or mask and place in receptacle. 10. Wash your hands. Using a mask. You need clean mask. Procedure. 1. Obtain mask from box. 2. Position mask to cover your nose and mouth. 3. Bend nose bar so that it conforms over bridges of your nose. 4. If you are using a mask with string ties, tie top strings on top of your head to prevent slipping. If you are using a con-shaped mask, tie top strings over your ears. 5. Tie bottom strings around your neck to secure mask over your mouth. There should be no gaps between the mask and your face. 6. Important. Change mask every 30 minutes or sooner if it becomes damp as effectiveness is greatly reduced after 30 minutes, or if mask is moist. 7. Wash your hands before removing mask. 8. To remove mask, untie lower strings first, or slip elastic band off without touching mask. 9. Discard mask in a trash container. 10. Wash your hands. Removing items from isolation room. Equipment needed for this procedure. 1. Large red isolation bags. 2. Specimen container. 3. Plastic bag with biohazard level. 4. Laundry bag. 5. A red plastic container in room 6. Cleaning Articles Procedure 1. Place laboratory specimen in plastic bag. Affix biohazard label to plastic bag. 2. Dispose of all sharps in appropriate red plastic container in room. 3. Place all linen in linen bag. 4. Place reusable equipment such as procedure trays in plastic bags. 5. Dispose of all garbage in plastic bags. 6. Double bag all material from isolation room. Follow procedure for utilizing double bagging for isolation. All materials removed from an isolation room is potentially contaminate. This will prevent spread of microorganisms. 7. Replace all bags, such as linen bag and garbage, in appropriate container in room. 8. Make client's room clean as necessary, using germicidal solution. 9. Leave the client's room today. Using double bagging for isolation. You need the following. 1. 2 isolation bags. 2. Items to be removed from room. 3. Gloves. Procedure. 1. Follow dress protocol for entering isolation room. 2. Close isolation bag when it is one half to three fourths full. Close bag inside the isolation room. 3. Double bag for safety if outside of bag is contaminated, if the bag could be easily penetrated, or if contaminated material in the bag is heavy and could break bag. 4. Set up a new bag for continued use inside room. Bag is usually read with the word biohazard written on outside of bag. 5. Place bag from inside room into a bag held open by a second healthcare worker outside room if double bagging is required. Second healthcare worker makes a cuff with the top of the bag and places hands under cuff. This prevents hands from becoming contaminated. 6. 
place bag into second bag without contaminating outside of bag. Secure top of bag by typing a knot in top of bag. 7. Take bag to designated area where biohazard material is collected, usually a dirty utility room. 8. Remove gloves and wash hands. Transporting isolated client outside the room. Equipment needed. 1. Transport vehicle. 2. Bath blanket. 3. Mask for client if needed. Procedure. 1. Explain procedure to patient. 2. If client is being transported from a respiratory isolation room, instruct him or her to wear a mask for the entire time out of isolation. This prevents the spread of airborne microbes. 3. Cover the transport vehicle with a bath blanket if there is a chance of soiling when transporting a client who has a draining wound or diarrhea. 4. Help client to transport vehicle. Cover client with a bath blanket. 5. Tell receiving department what type of isolation client needs and what type of precaution hospital personnel should follow. 6. Remove bath blanket and handle as contaminated linen when client returns to room. 7. Instruct all hospital personnel to wash their hands before they leave the area. 8. Wipe down transportation vehicle with antimicrobial solution if soiled. Protocol for leaving isolation room. 1. Untie gown at wrist. 2. Take off gloves. 3. Untie gown at neck 4. Pull gown off and place in laundry hamper. 5. Take off goggles or face shield. 6. Take off mask. 7. Wash hands. Guidelines for disposing of contaminated equipment. 1. Disposable gloves. Place an isolation bag separate from burnable trash and direct to appropriate hospital area for disposal. 2. Glass equipment. Bag separately from metal equipment and return to central sterilization room. 3. Metal equipment. Bag all equipment together, label and return to central sterilization room. 4. Rubber and plastic items. Bag items separately and return to central sterilization room for gas sterilization. 5. Dishes. Requires no special precautions unless contaminated with infected material, then bag, label, and return to kitchen. 6. Plastic or paper dishes. Dispose of these items in burnable trash. 7. Soiled linens. Place in laundry bag and send to separate area of laundry room from special care. If possible, place linen's hot water soluble bag. This method is safe for handling as bag may be placed directly into washing machine. Double bagging is usually required because these bags are easily punctured or torn. They also dissolve when wet. 8. Food and liquids. Dispose of these items by putting them in toilet, flush thoroughly. 9. Needles and syringes. Do not recap needles, place in puncture proof container. 10. Sphygmomanometer and stethoscope. Require no special precaution unless they are contaminated. If contaminated, disinfect using the appropriate cleaning protocol based on the infective agent. 11. Thermometers. Dispose of electronic probes cover with burnable trash. If probe or machine is contaminated, clean with appropriate disinfectant or infective agent. If reasonable thermometers are used, disinfect with appropriate solution.